Hey, hey everyone, and uh, welcome in. It's a Monkey Mar. Before we get into today's a three in one video update, make sure you please click that subscribe button, the bell for notifications, and of course, the like. Let's do an update on Megan Boswell, Erica Lloyd, and a Suzanne Morphew. And with that, let's get into today's video. Let's get into a few updates. Megan Boswell, and we all know she seeks release from jail amid investigation into a daughter's death. Little Evelyn Boswell, and most of us do know this story. So this article is from yesterday, August 3rd, 2020, out of Blountville, Tennessee. A Tennessee mother jailed for allegedly giving false information in the disappearance of her infant daughter, Evelyn, has been asking a judge to release her from prison. The remains of Megan Boswell's daughter, 15-month-old Evelyn May, were found nearly five months ago inside a shed owned by her grandfather. And we all know who that is. The child's teenage mother, Megan Boswell, has been jailed in Sullivan County on charges she lied about her daughter's whereabouts. Her attorney, Brad Sproles, has been pushing a judge to lower the $150,000 bond on 11 counts of filing a false report to Knoxville, New Sentinel reported. So far, Sullivan County Judge J James Goodwin has refused. It has actually taken a while. Like, where are the murder charges for little Evelyn? So, Sproul said told Goodwin on Friday that Megan Boswell has already served five months in false report case. He said if she had been tried and convicted, she would likely qualify for probation. Goodwin left Megan Boswell's bond intact and postponed her hearing in the false report case until August 28th. The discovery of the toddler's body March 6th followed a search across three states for a girl. Megan Boswell was arrested February 25th, 2020. Authorities said her inaccurate and conflicting statements had impeded the investigation. So now we wait till August 28th, 2020 to get the latest update on her. And they're probably scrambling now. They are going to have to either charge her with murder or she cannot stay in jail forever on the charges that she has. All right, let's get into the next case that came out with an article yesterday, and that is Erica Lloyd. Okay, so next in the update, like I just said, is California mother goes missing during road trip to Joshua Tree, Erica Lloyd. August 3rd, 2020, which was yesterday, I actually emailed Detective Pennington, but he never got back to me. And I actually did check just before we got up to Erica in this video. Another case that bothers me. Because a few weeks ago, an article came out that said, now they do not suspect foul play. Then we get this article, which is from yesterday, a California mother destined for a trip to Joshua Tree National Park amid the coronavirus pandemic in June vanished two days into her travels and has been missing ever since. Now, I don't know who was following this case, but I'm not even sure she made it to Joshua Landing. So Erica Lloyd, 37, mother of a 12-year-old son, set out from Walnut Creek for the roughly 500-mile road trip on June 14th, 2020, but two days later, her family told news station KESQ they lost contact with her. And I've got the videos on her, 
in my video section if you want to and you're not familiar with the story. So being on lockdown for almost three months, not being able to work, and she was trying at home school, her son, it was starting to get to her. The pressure was not having any income, Erica's mom, Ruth Lloyd, told the outlet last Friday. The same day Erica's family lost touch with her, authorities found her abandoned 2006 Black Honda Accord near the park on California State Route 62 and 29 Palms, according to the California Highway Patrol. The car's dashboard was damaged and several windows broken. The San Bernardino County Sentinel reported, leading family members to believe Erica may have gotten into an accident. We don't know if she had some memory loss when she got hit by the airbag, Ruth told KESQ. Maybe she doesn't know who she is. We don't know. We aren't sure about her mental state. I am going to disagree. Erica's family said they hired a local cave and mine expert to help with the search. A GoFundMe page has been set up to help cover the costs of the search efforts. And I'm going to drop that GoFundMe link in the description in case anybody wants to help. But remember, her car was first found inside the campground. And it was beaten up. And the cops cited it with a ticket. But the next day, it was found outside of the park on that California State Route 62 facing the road and cameras showed it leaving the park something with this is just so suspect to me very suspect all right so let's get into Suzanne Morphew and see what's new with her and Barry I don't give a rat's what is new with him so before I touch on Suzanne Morphew, even though there's not too much new on her, let's discuss the El Paso County Sheriff's Office identifies woman found dead on Highway 24 in Cascade, Colorado. So some people thought maybe it could be Suzanne, some people weren't sure, some people thought no. Well, the El Paso County Sheriff's Office says it was a 22-year-old woman who was found dead on the side of Highway 24 last week in Cascade. Her name was Deidria De Deidria 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 L. Duncan, 22, was identified Tuesday as the victim in a homicide that's currently under investigation now there's a couple of things out on her and I am going to do a video on who she was and see if we can't figure out what happened to her because that is horrible I mean a 22 year old girl found on the side of a highway so anyone who is interested in who she was then I am going to do a follow-up video on her tomorrow so let's get into Suzanne Morphew, and really there is nothing new, like I said, but I did do a video on Trevor, and I don't know, my gut tells me that something is just off about Trevor Matthew Knoll, but the video was taken down, and I did not do anything different than I always do, so let's go back and look into Trevor Knoll just a little bit and then I'm gonna go ahead and read this article real quick that a family friend said about the couple Suzanne and Barry Amorphew so like I said earlier I had that video taken down that I made on Trevor Knoll by YouTube and I didn't fight it I just let it go so in this part that I'm going to show you what I was showing you about Trevor in the first part I'm just going to leave the addresses and things like that out but I'm not sure what the big deal is so the GoFundMe page was created May 13th at 2020 they were looking for 50,000 the goal 
and they're at 32,372. There's no updates on it, and the last update was on June 18th by Trevor, the organizer. And so they're explaining why they need the money and for food, family, housing, accommodation, so on, so on. You know, but it still always was weird because there was a $200,000 reward for her and then they turned around to donate well to look to to get up to $50,000 donated through the GoFundMe I always thought something was off about Treasure and he, Trevor and he has not been around lately like at all so let's go back real fast and look into maps and see where Suzanne and Barry live he went to Denver supposedly that weekend during a COVID-19 lockdown on Mother's Day and Suzanne is just missing so I have changed the address location but I put it like right next to the location so Suzanne and Barry live down here right here he went to Denver that weekend which is right here Denver area and Trevor and his wife Sarah live in this area right about here just right there somewhere I'm not going to give you the address because I don't want to cause any problems but I don't know I just find something strange with Suzanne Morphew and they do say that they have not ruled out anyone everyone is still a suspect and then we had a family friend that decided to talk about what a wonderful couple they are. Okay, so we know that Trevor is related to Barry. Barry's sister is Trevor's mother. But here's a friend of the family's friend says missing Colorado mom Suzanne Morphew and husband Barry seemed like good model family so I know this was a while ago this post was on July 23rd of 2020 but I'm not gonna run into every single thing that pops up with Barry or Suzanne because all as I care about is where is she so before Colorado mom Suzanne Morphew disappeared during a bike ride on Mother's Day, everything in her life seemed to be going well. That family structure, in quotes, where the husband loves being the provider and the wife loves being the homemaker. They fit that to a T. Longtime friend Jeff Isles tells people in this week's issue. But now Morphew, a mom of two, is missing, having vanished on a bike ride on May 10th, 2020. If she even went on a bike ride, I don't think she was even a... I mean, I hate to say it, but I think something happened to Suzanne the night before. While her bike and a personal item were recovered during a search of an area near Maysville home. Little else is known about Morphew's disappearance. I wonder if they found her cell phone. They are close. A good model family, Isle says, of Morphew and her husband and their two daughters, Mallory and Macy. Since she vanished, investigators have received more than 600 tips, carried out numerous searches throughout the county, and conducted countless interviews 
The Chaffee County Sheriff's Office said in a statement, Family has previously stated that Morphew's husband, Barry Morphew, was out of town in Denver when his wife went missing. He was at the firefighters class or something during the COVID lockdown, you remember. So investigators are not ruling out foul play in Morpheus' disappearance and the FBI and Colorado Bureau of Investigations have been aiding in the search. Anyone with information is urged to call the FBI tip line at 719-312-7530. And I'll post that in the description, of course. Yeah, so I want to hear your guys' thoughts on what you think about Trevor. And with that, it is a wrap. I want to thank you all for coming in. Thank you for watching. Please like or dislike, whichever you prefer. And a subscribe. Everyone, please stay safe from COVID-19. And... A stay a vigilant. Have a good day or a good night wherever you are in the world. And I will keep you updated on Megan the Monster. Of course, what happens with the Erica Lloyd case and Suzanne Morphew. All right, guys, and with that, I am out.